What's going on? Welcome back to another edition of Gen Sports Corner back at you for Tuesday, October 18, 2022. You know what it is. Fly equals fly. 6-0 and oh, bird game, baby. Before I get into it, make sure you like, subscribe, click the notification bell so you know every time I'm dropping a new video. Without further ado, let's go into the recap of this game. You know it was Eagles Dallas week. We spanked that ass. They talked trash. They came in. They got the pride humble and sent packing back to Dallas. Four and two, get the f out of here. So let's go ahead, go ahead and get into it. Um, let's give a brief recap. Eagles came in, they did their thing. We do what we do every week: we run the ball, we wear you down with that front five, and then we grind the clock out. They had a couple of big drives, and when you look at this this stat sheet here, it tells the tell, tell the story. Eagles, 268 total yards. Cowboys had 315 yards, and a lot of those yards came in the third quarter and the fourth quarter as they were trying to get back in this game. And you look at the passing yards, 181 passing yards for the Cowboys, 132 for the Eagles. When you look at the rushing game, 134 for the Cowboys and 136 for the Eagles. And look, Dallas had some success in that third quarter, but the stats don't tell you the complete story because you look at the passing yardage and the rushing yardage, not terribly different, but when you look at the turnover differential, and then you look at the time of possession, and then you look at the amount of points scored in the second quarter that put Dallas behind the eight ball, then that tells you everything you need to know about this game. Dallas had three turnovers, three interceptions thrown by one Mr. Cooper Rush. We thought he was the next coming of Tom Brady, the way people were talking about him, but look, he's not bad. He's not going to kill you, but he's a guy, okay? And you have a front seven, like the Eagles have on defense, that's going to be able to apply pressure and really shut down your run game and be able to put pressure on that quarterback. Mistakes happen. It's not a coincidence. So you look at this game, right? You look at what happened in that second quarter, and a, and a big stat that popped out was the Eagles have outscored their opponents by a differential of about 84 points in the second quarter this year through five games up to that point when they showed that stat up on the screen. And that's that's huge. They are coming out and they are really putting it to you. They're running the ball, they're wearing your ass out, having six to seven minute drives and just eating up the clock and putting pressure on your defense. And they're going over there gasping for air. Where's the oxygen tank, coach? I need this. I'm dying out here. And you think they don't affect teams in the second half? You were sadly mistaken. At halftime, it was 20 to 3 Eagles. Now, to their credit, Dallas, they came out in that third quarter and they were able to put, put up seven in that third quarter. And then they came out in the fourth, they put up another seven. It was 20 to 17. But then the Eagles came and responded back and put up a touchdown, a seven yard strike to Devontae Smith from Jalen Hurts. And they were able to really cement the game at that point. Now, you, you look you look at you look at Cooper Rush in this game, and you look at Ezekiel Elliott. Now, Ezekiel Elliott, 13 carries, 81 yards, and a touchdown. He got his at points, but for the most part, they contained him. That that came in that came more more or less in the third quarter and maybe the beginning of the fourth. But for the whole first half, they did absolutely nothing on offense. It, it, it almost looked like they were going to walk away with this in a blowout. Like the fact that Dallas fought back, you have to give that team credit because they looked like they were going to really get folded up and sent packing. So give them credit for being a tough team and showing some fight, but they were really outclassed in this game, just like a lot of teams that the Eagles played this year. Dallas coming in with a top two ranked defense, either one number one or number two in the league. And the Eagles came out and they just shredded them in that first half. They shredded them to pieces. And one of the big things I liked that they did was they had a very unique game plan for number 11, Micah Parsons. They didn't even go at him in terms of trying to double team him or whatnot. They had a lot of different ways of attacking him. They would run the, the read option where they would make him decide between going after Jalen Hurts or Jalen Hurts would hand the ball off to Miles Sanders. And then that split second that Micah Parsons had to sit back and react that allowed Miles Sanders or Kenneth Gainwell to go ahead and get a one-yard head start on Micah Parsons and turn turn a play that 
maybe Micah makes nine times out of ten for a one yard gain, those runs all of a sudden turn into five yards a pop, six yards a pop, fourteen yards here. Right? So and those things add up. So I think a big a big turning point in the game, in my opinion, was when Lane Johnson went down with his injury. And that allowed Micah Parsons to really get going and that helped them to stall out some of those Eagles drives in that third quarter and allowed that Dallas offense to to get back into the game. So I think that was a that was a big turning point, but this team is so deep that it wasn't going to make or break the outcome of this game. The Eagles have so much more depth that it allowed them to be able to say, okay, you guys threw a couple of punches, try to make a rally, but it's not going to be good enough. So great, great job by the Eagles. They, they went out and got it done, 6-0. and uh, re- Really good performance. Jalen Hurts, 15 for 25, a buck 55 through the air, Two passing touchdowns. He looked he looked really good as usual. And he's just getting sharper and sharper and sharper. Miles Sanders, 18 carries, 71 yards, about four yards a pop, a touchdown, another solid game here. And then AJ Brown, five catches, 67 yards, a touchdown. Devontae Smith, five catches, 44 yards, and a touchdown. They look really good. They look really good. They had control of this game, even at points where you saw the Saw Dallas try to get back, and you never had the sense that the Eagles were really going to fall apart. At least that's the sense that I got. They really did that their thing. CJ Gart, and then you come back, and we have a drive where we end up punting. We don't get any points out of that. Dallas gets the ball back with about what two and a half minutes to go. They they go a little bit down the field, but not that far. And then they decide, hey, time's getting low. One minute, eight seconds left. They tried a 59-yard field goal. He pushes it wide right, and that's pretty much it. But it wasn't as close as the, as the score would suggest. They played a very solid game. We have done we did to Dallas what we did to every team so far this year outside of the Detroit Lions where we may, let them come storming back. But other than that, we've been all over people. And then you look at this, this um, schedule down the stretch, and you really got to like the Eagles and the spot they're sitting in. So you go into this bye week, you get a chance to really go over a lot of the flaws that you've seen in this team. You know, like I said, that differential in the second quarter, plus 83 or plus 84 in the second quarter. They've been coming out and bombing teams, putting teams away in the second quarter. And then in the third and fourth quarters, they really, especially the third quarter, for, they don't, they're not letting off off the gas, but they are not doing the little things to be able to keep applying pressure. And if if nothing else, you have to be able to continue to score. Even if it's not touchdowns, you got to keep putting up three here, three there. Let's say it's 26 to 10, right? And they score a touchdown coming out at, well, let's, let's say it's 26 10. They score another touchdown in the third quarter, it's 26 17. You have to be able to put up three points here, right? 27 19, 20, 29 17, okay? They come back, say they score another touchdown. It's 29 to 24. You score another field goal, it's, 20, it's 32 24. At the very least, they have to score a touchdown. So, what you're doing is you're making them have to score touchdowns every possession just to keep pace and try to catch up. Even if you're not scoring touchdowns, you get up, get a big lead, you just keep scoring field goals and you keep tightening the noose, keep putting that pressure on. So even as the other team is scoring seven points, they know that they have to not only score touchdowns to keep pace, but as time starts to run out, now you have to make more, take more chances and leave yourself open to making more mistakes than you would earlier in the game. And then that just makes it easier for you as a defense to tighten the noose and yank that cord up. Sorry to be so graphic, but that's what it is. So that's what's going to have to work on over this next week. Take the week off, really get in the film room, fix the flaws, and then come back out. And you look at the schedule, and you got to be loving it. You got the Steelers at home on 1030 right for Halloween, and I think it's going to be a spooky time for the Steelers. And then the week after that, you're going down to Houston against the Texan squad. It is really bad. They're young. They're inexperienced. They're not that good. 
And then you have the Commanders again back at home in Philly. And I will be there for that game. I will be getting footage. Hopefully, I get my face on ESPN. You never know, dog. But we're going to be there for that. They're going to put a whooping on their ass. And then after that, you're going out to Indianapolis to face a Colts team that is just struggling just to figure out where the fuck they are on a week-to-week -week basis. They don't know up from down, left from right. They, they're just trying to figure out when they're playing offense and playing defense because apparently when they're on offense, they find it uh, hard to keep the ball from the other team. I, I don't know what their issue is, but they, they are discombobulated to say the least. I mean, we all remember... Well, at least I do. We wind back two weeks to that Denver and Indianapolis game. And yeah, Denver's defense is very good, but it was painful to watch. Very painful to watch. That As bad as Denver was with, with Russell Wilson being out of sorts with that offense, the Colts were even worse. They just, they had nothing, especially without Jonathan Taylor. So even with Jonathan Taylor, it's going to, they have a lot of issues to fix on that team. So you have to look at these next four games and wonder, hey, can the Eagles be 10-0? and 0? Could they even be 8-2 and 2 or 9-1? and 1? Either way, they're in a very great spot. This division being as stacked as it is, Eagles are 6-0, and 0, Dallas 4-2 and 2 after the loss, but the Giants, some way, somehow, find a way to keep winning. They are 5-1, and 1, and they're right behind the Eagles. So, you know, we're, we're in a good spot. Let's continue to improve upon the things we can improve and then keep doing the things that are working. And then last but not least, I thought this was very interesting. Near the end of the game, there was a scuffle between Osa, don't know what the hell your name is, it doesn't matter, defensive tackle for the Cowboys, and Jason Kelsey. I think Jason Kelsey, he might have uh, got, got a, a nice little shot on him and then Osa retaliated. And that was right near the end of the game. And it's like, yo... Game's about over. What are we doing here? And then you look to the sideline. You see Nick Sirianni. You couldn't hear him, but if you did a little bit of lip reading, uh, lip reading you could see him saying, yo, that's fucking game. Fuck you. <laughs> to the Dallas sideline. Now, if that's not as close to Buddy Ryan as you're going to get, I don't know what is, man. And that, I think that's why we all felt, and that's why this whole city is loving and embracing Nick Sirianni. Because he's one of us, man. After all the uncertainty and doubt that we had when he delivered his first press conference, fast forward to now, we got that dog mentality and he embodies that on the sideline. I mean, he's more animated and incited than the players at times. I mean, he's saying that and you see Fletcher Cox walking behind him like, word, it's like that, all right. Now, backstory... Brandon Graham came on WIP this morning on Tuesday, and he said he, he told us about what Nick Sirianni was telling him about the Cowboys game from last year when they blew us out 51-26. And he said that Nick Sirianni mentioned to him that some of the Cowboys players came over to him and said, y'all don't belong to be on the field with us and all this stuff. We the NFC East. And, you know, chirping, yapping. It's like, okay. And I love that he didn't forget about that. And he gave that same energy back. And not just gave that same energy back, but had a game plan and a squad together to really put that shit into writing on the field. Not just through the media and talking and chirping. No, no, no. We come on the field and we're going to run a ball down your throat. And we're going to make you give in to our will. Because we're the top dogs in the East. Write that down. But, you know. That, that's what it is. So proud of this team. Great job, y'all. Like I said, um, we're going to be back two weeks from now getting ready for the Eagles coming off the bye week against the Steelers. And we'll get ready for what we hope to be 7-0. and Right now, I am looking at the, the end of the Phillies game one of the NLCS in the ninth inning. I had to re-record this episode, but right before I, I re-recorded this, Bryce Harper had the big... Solo shot to left field, turned the pitch inside out, just took it out. And then Kyle Schwarber came up after that, I think an inning after that, and he hit the longest home run that's been hit in that ballpark out in San Diego. Projected 488 feet, it left the bat at 119.7 miles per hour. Just crazy, man. Bats are coming alive. Right now, Bryce Harper is up. Knife inning, top of the knife inning, 
one two count two out so hey hopefully we can hold on to this 2-0 lead right now and and get this game one wrap it up and go into game two uh with good momentum uh that being said uh let me know what you guys think about this eagles game let me know what you think about the next oh my goodness okay about to say, I thought you hit him another home run. But let me know what you guys think about the Eagles and how they are moving into the bye week, where you think they'll be in the next four games. Do you think they'll be 8-1, and 92, 10 and 0? Let me know what you guys think. And then in the next episode, I'm going to get into boxing. There were a lot of big fights this previous weekend. Deontay Wilder making his big return. Clarissa Shields and uh, Savannah Marshall uh, battling for Undisputed. At, at middleweight in the women's division, we had a big fight, the rematch between Devin Haney and George Cambosis Jr., as well as a eliminator match at, I believe, super middleweight between Caleb, Caleb Plant and, uh, I think, Anthony Durrell. I always get their names mixed up. So uh, four, four very, very good fights. It was an action-packed weekend. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the Eagles, and we're going to be back at it soon. Till next time. Peace.